chapters 9, 10, and 11 are conform this part of the statistical theory. They introduce the three chapters introduce con concepts related to probability theory, sampling, and estimation, and statistical uh, hypothesis testing. And the central theme of this, the whole section, is to use to draw conclusions from the data uh, rather than just describing the data. So, yeah, something in the introduction of this section is, or something that this section emphasizes, is that uh, learning without making assumption is a myth. In this part, the author is saying that um, sometimes we need to make assumptions to approximate us to the real world. Um, for example, they mention a dialogue where you see here, yeah, introduction. Previous one. Yeah, they introduce a story where, I mean, using a story where there are two persons that are trying to guess where is uh, behind a hill. So, um, if one person get the correct answer or the correct guessing, it is marked as a, as a winning or, a, or, a, or as a positive score. So, um, but if, if we are trying to guess who of the both person is going to win or predicting correct, correctly um, what is behind the heels most of the times, if if we are if we try to make objective on that uh, guessing, we we can say that we cannot guess or we cannot um, make any. Where is the word? Yeah, any prediction because the possibilities are fifty fifty. I mean, each one of the persons can. Uh, make the correct prediction. So this is just based on the on the most object objective reasoning. However, uh, if we start to seeing the numbers, we are going to see we are going to start seeing that one of the persons um, is better for making the guessing or making the predictions, but we don't have like any previous knowledge or funda fundamentals for um, be being in favor of that person. So if we make an assumption that one person is better for making prediction is just based on our beliefs because we don't have like any informational like background of, about that. However, that could, could uh, be correct and could give, give us a chance to, to win, but it's just based on a, of an assumption, but that, that assumption could be correct. This like basic in just beliefs. So the chapter is trying to emphasize that sometimes for making correct prediction or for trying to approach to the reality, we need to make assumptions. So however, the selection of the assumptions should be appropriate and they should align with the nature of the data. So we cannot just making random assumptions. They should be, uh, as most logical as possible. And um, yeah, it says that this, this um, there is a myth that we should not assumption for learning about something. So um, 
Yeah, with this main point in mind, the author moves to the chapter nine, which is introduction to probability. The chapter introduces to the fundamental concept of probability. It's um, emphasized again that statistics is more just than summarizing the data. In, in, in fact, it says that descriptive statistics is just one of the smallest part of the statistics. And yeah, mostly statistics involves making inferences about population based on sample data. And um, yeah, it says that intuition is not enough for drawing accurate conclusions. So we need a tool, which is a statistics. So it introduces the concept of representatives in data collection and the assumptions underlying. It provides examples, an example of a survey about of an election where they say, where they explain that the TV channel only run an elections poll with 1,000 person, which is not rep representative of the whole of the people registered to vote. So the TV channel is like making conclusions from a non representative uh, group or non representative, yeah, representative number of the whole population. So, uh, yeah, with this example, is like saying the the representative should be uh, appropriate and the assumption also uh, should be like as more logical as possible because both impact the reliability of the conclusions. So um, yeah, the chapter introduces differential statistic as the means to answer questions about population based on, on sample data and emphasizes the link between probability and statistics. The, it says that the probability theory forms, forms part of making informer, inform of uh, making statistical, inform, making informed statistical and uh, inferences. And finally, the chapter uh, provides basic concepts about probability. And um, yeah, in fact, the next uh, section is about uh, what is the difference between probability and statistics. It says that the probability theory provides answers to questions about the chances, chances of specific events happening. Um, it says something, I mean, that the most important thing about probability is that we are departing or starting from a known model about the reality. So, and we just want to uh, make calculations based on, on that model. For example, Yeah, it says that probability is associated with events that are well defined and we have no underlying probability. So we, we, we have a previous model of the work. An example is calculating the probability of uh, coin flips or like rolls based on, stop, on an established model where uh, the probability of obtaining, uh, obtaining a hell is 0 0.5. While statistics, in contrast, involving a learn uh, from the data for approximate us to the real world, to the reality, or deciding which model is more reliable or, in, or which model of the world I should put my trust in. Um, yeah, the goal is draw conclusion about the world based on observed data. Um, statistical questions often 
are around inferring characteristics of a population based on a sample. For example, we can determine whether a coin is fair based on the outcomes of multiple coin flips. For example, for, For example, about the statistics the authors provide, or it says that we can construct two models to decide if a coin, coin is fair. For example, um, if we can say that if the coin is fair, our model should be the probability of obtaining health should be 0 0.5. But if the coin is not fair, then our model should be that the probability of obtaining health is different to 0 0.5. So in this case, rather than making just a calculation based on a, of a um, pre-established model, we are trying to uh, configure a model or decide which model is more reliable or the truth. So the key points of this part is that, yeah, again, the probability question start with a known model that involves calcula calculating the likelihood or probability of events based on that model, um, deal with well-defined events and no underlying probabilities, while statistical questions begin with data and aim to infer the truth about the world from the data. And statistics focuses on making conclusions about population based on sample data. The statistical questions often involve determine, determining which probability model best fits with the observed data, with the reality. And it says that both are interconnecting, interconnecting as probability provides the foundation for making statistical inferences. So it's, um, it's crucial underst understanding uh, both things as probability and statistical analysis. Uh, so the next part of the book is what those probability means. It says that like if I mean the everyone can understand easily the word probability. Uh, and informally we could define it as chances or um, likelihood or probabilities, but like defining it more formally could be like really challenging. It says indeed that there are different points of view about what is a probability. Um, it's, it introduces these differences, uh, putting an example about betting on a soccer game. So, but basically the, the author says that there is like two views, two points of view or two, yeah, two points of view about what is a probability. Uh, I mean, there are many, but the main two are the frequentist view and the bias, Bayesian view. The frequentist view defines the probability as long-run frequency events. For example, if a um, fair coin is flipped repeatedly, the proportion of gets will coverage to 50% with the time or as the number of flips approaches to infinity. As the main advantage of the frequentist view is that this is objective and unambiguous and deals with actual sequences of events. So there is no chances to introduce like non-objective assumptions or points of view. However, it, it like has the disadvantages of or cannot deal with non-repeatable events. For example, uh, it says, I mean, the example it provides is uh, the scientists can say that, for example, tomorrow we have 50 chances of uh, precipitation, but this event is, is 
just unique, like um, tomorrow, the, the tomorrow's weather is a um, unique event. It's not like a repeatable event. You cannot like have an, um, a frequency approach for this kind of uh, event. So it says that there are alternatives to deal with them, but sometimes they cannot like, or could be like very uh, complex or not the more in intuitive ways of representing the results. So it says that it's a limitation of the uh, frequentist points of view. Um, yeah, especially when it's when we are talking about infinite sequences, which are not uh, found in the real world. It says it runs four times. It runs an example of um, flipping a coin. It says that at the beginning we are going to see the. Uh, uh, yeah, the probability of obtaining a head at the beginning is going to, I mean, the range is going to be very wide, but, but as the number of uh, flips increase, this uh, proportion is, is going to tend to 0 0.5. So, and it's the same for the, the, the four times the authors run the, the experiment. So on the other hand, the Bayesian view consider the probability as measure of the belief held by an intelligent or rational agent or person. Mm, because this person or this intelligent or rational agent uh, allowed assigning probabilities to a wide range of events including non-repeatable ones. Yeah, it says that it works with the degree, degree of belief to a rational gambling, where probability reflects the willingness, willingness to accept or reject certain bets. So this approach is more flexible, but the main disadvantage is that it requires subjective uh, elements or yeah, assigning a probability. So uh, the key points of this section is that the probability is based on a, uh, the frequentist view is uh, is that the probability is based on, on a long run frequencies of events and is subjective and unambiguous while the Bayesian, Bayesian view the pro for the Bayesian view, the probability is a measure of the belief held by an intelligent agent and is subjective and, and, and allows probabilities being assigned to a wide range of events. So about the disadvantages, the frequentist view is more objective, but might not account for non-repeatable events, while the Bayesian view allows for more broader probabilistic interpretation, but introduces uh, subjectivity. So the frequentist probability coverages to a stable value, whereas as the um, number of times or observations increases, whereas Bayesian probability is based on the degree of belief assigned to the event. Uh, which view we are going to use depends of, on the context. Uh, but it says that uh, the frequentist uh, approach is more widely used, e even in psychology, which is the, uh, the focus of the book. But however, despite the frequentist methods are more commonly used, there are no correct answer about which, uh, which school is uh, correct. So it says that it, it depends on, on the analyst and the context of the experiment or the uh, questions we are trying to respond. So yeah, the next, the next section is basic probability theory. 
for in, in here, the author introduces the concept of probability distributions, which are ways of assigning probabilities to different outcomes. So uh, within a, which are something important is that different the probabilities to different outcomes, but within a sample space. So each outcome is associated to a probability value ranking between zero and one, indicating the likelihood of that event occurring. So the probability distribution are illustrating using an example of choosing a pair of pants to wear each day. Um, here we cannot see very easily the table, but let me see here. Yeah, here is. Yeah, it's a, it, it's just a, the probability which which uh, color of the or which pair of genes we are going to use during the week, depending on the number of um, genes we have in our uh, wardrobe. So, for example, it says that the blue genes have a probability of 0 0.5, the gray genes 0 0.3, black genes 0 0.1, the black suit has 0 probability, and the blue track suit has like 0 0.9, uh, probabilities. So con these probabilities always show soon or have a total or give a total of one. And it also can be illustrated or represented uh, graphically, for example, as a bar plot. Uh, we can see as we have like a higher number of blue jeans, we have more chances of wearing. Um, uh, blue jeans. So yeah, it says that it introduces the concept or elementary events and sample space where elementary events are individual outcomes. Could be, for example, uh, blue jeans, gray jeans, black jeans, uh, go. Um, introduces the concept or sample space, which is Yeah, the sample space is all the possible outcomes. Is that, yeah, the total of possibilities. And the probabilities are assigned to these uh, element, elementary events to represent their like, likelihood to, or to the probability to occur. Uh, it introduces the law of total probability, which is that always the, or the total of the probabilities always show some uh, one. Reflecting that certainty that one of these events will occur. Yeah, the law is that the probabilities always should sum or add up to one. And also introduces the concept of non-elementary events, which is that there could be combinations of um, combination of elementary events. For example, we have the event. Sorry, did you say something? I still me. I cannot hear you very well. Esmeralda. Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, no, I can I can't uh, I couldn't hear you for a little while. Uh, but now can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Did where did you miss me? No, no, I just uh, did, 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 uh all okay. 
all good. Okay, then let's continue. So yeah, it's the law of total probabilities that the probabilities always should um, to one. Um, the, the chapter introduces the concept of non-elementary events, which are the which are combinations of elementary events. For example, um, the event of wearing jeans can be defined as combination of wearing blue, gray, or black jeans, or just like we can create another non-elementary events such as wearing suits, which is which can be defined as a combination of uh, wearing black suit or wearing uh, blue track suit. So the probability of, of a non-elementary events can be calculated by summing the probabilities of the conforming elementary events. So from these very basic uh, principles or concepts, we can derive or could be derived rules of probability, which are not covered in depth in this book, but uh, always should be satisfied. But I mean, it says that they are derived always from these elementary uh, facts or principles, such as the addition rule for mutually exclusive events and the multiplication rule for conditional probability. Um, yeah, as I said, are derived from the basic assumptions of probability theory. And uh, the book provides this basic table showing some of the very basic rules of probability that must be satisfied. For example, the, the probability of not being A is just like the notation is this one and the formula is one I mean the total of probabilities less the probability of uh, A, the probability of A or B, which can be, uh, yeah, the notation is this one and the formula is the probability of A plus the probability of B less the probability, uh, I don't know where is this means. Yeah, but I mean, the point is that we have like very basic uh, rules of probability, which are, are derived from the these basic uh, rules. So the, um, yeah, we have, we have had in mind this, uh, satisfied this role when we are working about with probabilities. So, and the next part of the uh, binom the book is about the binoma binomial distribution. It says that binomial distribution is one of the five uh, fundamental probability distributions in a statistical analysis. So we have the uh, binomial, binomial, normal, T, G square, and F distributions. But here, I mean, the, we are talking about binomial distribution. So it, mm, yeah, it introduced, the book introduces the concept of binomial distribution to the scenario of rolling dice or and flipping coins. Mm, there is a notation that we should know for understanding the binomial distribution, which is the uh, an n, which is the number of dice rolls. Is the it means the size parameter of the binomial distribution. The second parameter is uh, theta, which is the probability of success. In this case, it's getting a school on a die roll, and x, which is a random variable representing the number of success or schools in an experiment. Uh, in here, for example, we have the uh, probability of uh, we obtain for success or for yeah time success giving a probability of 0 0.167 and a number of 20. And considering 
this uh, example or this notation, the author introduces the basic formula for binomial distribution, which is this one. Uh, yeah. Which includes the, I mean, the, these uh, three parameters we, we defined previously. It says that um, so far there are functions for estimating the binomial distributions, but it says that it's important having in mind, mind how these distributions look uh, graphically. Here's an example, for example, how, how uh, this, this distribution looks with an N or a size of 20 with a probability of 160. Here we have, for example, the, the number one, yeah, yeah, that obtaining, for example, let's say five schools in a experiment with a N of 20 and a probability of 160 is like 0 0.12. So it is how we can, uh, how uh, binomial distributions looks like. So, so something important here, it says that the binomial distribution works with a limited uh, range. So which is a limited a size or number and works with usually with, uh, no, no, usually it always work with, um, with non-infinitive uh, range and the values of the uh, distribution are whole numbers. So yeah, it's, it's not a continuous uh, range. So then it says that there are R functions for estimating the probabilities of a um, binomial distribution. So for example, it says that we need to input the same or the very basic parameters of the binomial distribution, such as, such as for example, x, the size, which is n, and the theta, or the probability, and the function v uh, binom is estimate is going to estimate the the probability of x. So yeah. Is this this table should not be here. Um, yeah, it says that this the the values for this parameter is going to affect uh, strongly the shape of the uh, curve or our distribution. So it, it provides some examples here about how the ways yeah the the uh, input of the parameters is going to affect the shape of the curve so um yeah so before that it says uh, yeah in r there are some nomenclature a specific nomenclature for functions that works with the binomial distributions that are different for functions that work with a normal distribution. For example, it says that for obtaining the probability density of a value in an, with a normal distribution, the function is the norm, while for a binomial distribution is the B norm. D, the norm. Um, yeah, for the cum cumulative probability, we have again the norm and um, P, the norm, and generally a random number for a normal distribution is R norm, and um, for binom binomial is R 
binomes um, for obtaining Q for, um, yeah, Q, we have like Q norm and Q um, binorm. So yeah, this is like the basic of uh, binomial distributions. And I have not finished completely the normal distribution, but is mm, almost the something similar. It says that the main difference with the binomial distributions is that, I mean, it, it always is going to be or should be as a bell shape or as a Gaussian distributions. It could work with non binary uh, outcomes. And also the range of the the range of the distribution could be continuous and the values not always should be like whole numbers. And um, what else? Uh, yeah, it says that, for example, in the binomial distribution, the main parameters, as, as mentioned, were the probabilities and the size. Well, in here, the normal distributions, the probabilities are around a mean value. Um, yeah, and um, um, yeah, the distribution is measured by the standard deviation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and these both parameters, if we change the mean and the standard deviation, the shape of the curve is going to ch change. Yeah. Yes, as in the binomial distributions, a specific probability on their normal distribution can be calculated with the function we um, show previously, and also introduces the concept of uh, percentiles. And um, I think J yeah, is the it's the basic things about normal distribution. But I can go deeply in the normal distributions because I, I mean, I did a very quickly read on this. And yeah, the next section to, uh, to take is about other um, potential distributions that are less common use, such as um, sheet distribution and the F distribution. But yeah. I don't know if you want to see the normal distributions and other distributions. I don't know the first part of this next session or, or the whole of the next sessions because I need to possibly I could take them more deeply if you if you think it's reasonable. Yeah. Um... I think it's the normal distribution is fine. Yeah, it's very basic. I mean, the main main thing is that the, the main parameters that affect the normal distribution is the mean and the standard deviation is continue. Uh, it works for non um, binomial events or possibilities and tend to infinity. I mean, the extremes, the extreme value tends to infinity rather than, or indifferent with the binomial, where we have a defined number of um, size or, or of range. So yeah, I mean, it's the same as we change the basic parameters, we are going to obtain different shapes and defines the concept of quantiles as mentioned previously. And um, yeah, it's basically the, the most basic things about that. But possibly if you think is reasonable, I could retake the chapter, I'm not sure. Or we can let this for the final, I don't know what do you think? Because the next part is about other distributions look, such as T and F and Chi distribution, Chi. 
What do you think? What the C distribution? Um, I think that they are all uh, like um, deviation from the normal, from the normal distribution. So it's one that's more skewed on the left, the other on the right. And so like the T distribution, you use it when your data are very uh, small, if you have just a few data, so you prepare the T distribution. And, uh, there's quite a few differences between them, but the, um, uh, in general, it's normal distribution that is uh, mostly used to compare uh, on uh, the distribution of the of your, your data. Basically. So you first use the normal distribution, then you look at the density, and then uh, so basically, I think that, that that's uh, absolutely fine to just have a look at that for uh, for this chapter. That we might want to go back to other distributions if we need it. So okay. Know? So yeah, it's all of the chapter. Really. Yeah. Mm, thank you. Uh, and yeah, then for the next session, you're presenting chapter 10, right? Yeah, we have a look at the uh, other, um, your more specific things. Uh, and um, I'm, I hope to uh, assemble the two chapters together if there's not many uh, information in uh, both of them. So I can like assemble the two uh, for what we need. Basically. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then we. Possibly I'm going to start reading chapter 12 and 13 to be. Uh, I also can like present both together as yes, chapter nine, for example, was like very general. So possibly the 12 and 13 should be similar. Let's see. But okay, then 